playing it as loud as I can. I'm feeling it right up to the mic. All right, let's go, everybody. Welcome back. Artist Journal, March 4th, 2023, broadcasting from the non-space of the mind in Berlin, Germany. Computer is working. My name's Adrian Pocabelli. Unplanned. You know, I never know what I'm going to say here as I open up. I do have ideas. I mean, the idea that was actually going through my head as I was guzzling here is, you know what I love about this show? Is it is not built on the shoulders of giants. It is built on the dreams of artists, is what I was thinking to myself. It is. It was nobody, in a sense, nobody needed this to happen, this show, as far as people watching it and and whatnot. And so that's what I love about it. It's not one person decided, hey, Pokebelly, we choose you because we think X, Y, Z. It was literally, it's more about just like several people, uh, many people, probably a couple of hundred artists here, if we had to guess, if I had to guess. Uh, so all very interesting. And that's what I love about it. Uh, so let's continue here. The sun is coming out here in Berlin. It feels like an early spring, which kind of makes me wonder about how hot this summer could be. Who knows? Maybe maybe just getting ahead of myself. Anyways, let's go. There is a massive show. The computer is still freezing because there is so much going on here. So I may, and I've been talking about this actually for over a year of kind of slimming down the show a bit. I may get pretty serious about that and try and get it down to an hour again. Uh, it's again, it's always this balance between curation, inclusion, all this stuff, bringing in new artists, etc. And I always, even when the show was half an hour, I always tried to bring in new artists. So that is always kind of, uh, you know, and because new artists always come up and you want the show to be fresh and you don't want it to be the same because otherwise it gets boring. Frankly, even if the artists are brilliant, you don't want to always show the same people. Uh, so I'll just say, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. There's a ton to get through here today. Look at this. So you know what was kind of funny about this and why I decided to go with this? This beautiful work by Nicholas Dietrich. We saw a preview, I think, on Instagram uh, probably, I'm guessing, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Nicholas Dietrich puts a lot of work. Could have been three weeks ago. There's a lot of work. This is the finished version, minted on object. Only a couple gone. Last I checked here. But you know what I loved about it? A couple of things. I mean, on a just a purely irrational reptilian level, you know what I love about this work? It's kind of a weird, it's almost like me talking about the margins. It feels like a digital canvas. It feels like, you know, a hundred years ago when, you know, you're buying and, you know, when you're selling, you know, canvases from your little gallery in your street in Paris, let's say, you know, selling your Max Ernst or your De Chirico, uh, it kind of feels like that. It feels like this, almost this, phys there's a weird physicality for me when I look at this thing. It feels like a canvas, something to buy and sell. It's uh, something of value uh, and it's enigmatic. There is, you know, maybe it's not random here, me bringing up to Kiriko. There is a weird enigma of Nicholas Dietrich's work. As I, I think I've called it this before, enigmatic pixel art. I think that's the name of the episode, if you're looking for it, where we started with Nicholas Dietrich. And here we are again. In a weird sense, there is a weird, I would argue, kind of de Kiriko... Uh, you know, who was kind of inspired the surrealist, kind of a proto-surrealist, what they call it, metaphysical painting, interestingly. Uh, you know, this poetic painting, again, before the surrealist movement, but you could argue de Chirico visually. I mean, could we say de Chirico was the biggest kind of, who, did he set the stage more than any other artist? It's an interesting question. Again, we're in the province of story here, of accounts, not in this, you know, not of absolutes, uh, but we can say de Chirico definitely had a massive influence, and that is kind of how I feel about this. And maybe that's why I'm talking about Paris in the 1920s, you know, this kind of weird fantasy of selling canvases that this seems to evoke from me. This is something I want to carry in my, in my arm, and we haven't even discussed the work yet. Uh, and beautifully, uh, I like the size a lot, as far as just the uh, the zoom, 
again, kind of another kind of basic technicality uh, that is, you know, not even directly dealing with this work. Now, let's talk, talk about the work itself and this kind of modern day De Kiriko here. Here it looks like a kind of iPad of sorts or, you know, it looks like what's in a car. It looks like a GPS screen, right? Just poking up here. Like, is this even, like, down here? Is this, like, the front of some sort of automobile of, of a certain kind with a massive windshield? Like, is this a bus? It almost looks like a view from a bus. And here is a cement truck, interestingly blinking. And look at these brilliant tires here. Uh, beautifully done tires, this beautiful uh, gradient, bitmap gradient here, and almost like a Decurico here with the arches. I think you'd call that an arcade. You know, what you if you've ever been to Bologna in Italy, you'll see one of the big probably the biggest kind of charm of that city are the sidewalks that have these archways all across. I uh, I think what's called an arcade. Uh, and so interestingly here it's a little different. Um, but again, kind of has this De Chirico vibe to it. And look at the brilliant river. You know, half of these pixels seemingly not moving and the other half moving and the dithering going through, waving through. And as you get closer, it kind of, there's almost like a kind of depth of field seemingly. But is it just cycling through? Hard to say. And then this wonderfully creative simplicity here, the gray on black for the buildings. Again, the temptation is always to fill this stuff in, Right. Anybody who's an artist understands this. Anybody who's ever made a, an image, which is pretty much everybody, but if you've made one recently in the last three years, if you made a few images, you'll understand the temptation. I always, it's the reality principle. I always come back to this is to fill it in. We got to rationalize it, right? And so it's actually an interesting uh, conversation we've been having here over, you know, rawness. And actually, we'll see it again uh, with Yuri J in a second. Finally here, again, th this is a puzzle of sorts, and what I love about it, it's almost back to that reality principle idea that resists solving. It's like, what is going on here? Why, why is this being depicted, right? And again, it seems like if I had to guess, this is like a bus, and there's a windshield here that you can't see, but you'd think there'd be more, but maybe it's from, who knows what it is? But this, you know, intentionally ambiguous, poetic is like, is my first association when I say the word ambiguous, this poetic, you know, use of the GPS at a slight angle with these beautiful pixels here. My friends, we have poetry here. We have poetry here, which is why today's newspaper, The Imagination, front page, headline news, Nicholas Dietrich, and wait till you see the headline. Wait till you see this headline, which was a factor. In our headline here, the sun is a recording device, more enigma, more mystery, more poetry, not getting trapped in the everyday. Indeed, edition of 20, uh, I just picked one up, so there's 17 left. Get it while you can, five Tezos for this canvas. This, you know, it feels like the, uh, it, and when I say canvas, like it's art, it's art. So uh, just beautiful work from Nicholas Dietrich. So Let's continue here. Uh, thank you to Gaspar de la Guerre. I think we have a work by Gaspar actually in this uh, episode. The Jupiter 8, a famous synth. Someone asked if I had this. I don't. I have the Juno 106 at a friend's place, I believe in Ottawa. You know, it's been so long, I actually don't exactly remember where my synths are. I think it's in Ottawa at a friend's place, but I was like, how did I get those synths over there? Uh, so all to say, I do have the Juno 106, which is kind of a similar beast. Uh, so anyway, so this is from the Pixel Art uh, a notebook that went for 42. So thank you again to Gaspar. Nice sale, one of one. And these went pretty quick, the 303 sketch here. Uh, I thought actually 303 day would be March 3rd, and then I actually looked it up. It's actually March 30th. So uh, you may, if you if you miss this, uh, a couple of people were saying they missed it. Maybe check March 30th. I may do another uh, 303, maybe sooner than that. I actually have a few in reserve uh, just on the iPad there. So thank you to all the collectors here. Uh, sold out at 5 Tezos, now going for 20 on secondary. Thank you very much, and thank you to Cedar Plank. 
I thought this was hilarious. GM, yeah, with the uh, Drake meme here, pixelated out. Thank you, Pokebelly. Uh, all good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So thank you for that. And uh, again, uh, just a shout out. Again, these are the people uh, that you just feel, it makes you me really excited uh, about this, uh, just doing this and showing up here. Uh, and also for this, from Human Boy, fight for art. I love it. I love it. From Human Boy here, made an object paint 98. And there is your host here and the wonderfully done hair here. I actually, I was telling you, I went for a haircut on Friday. And uh, the my hairdresser there, Michelle, was just thrilled to hear about the great reactions uh, her work was getting. And look at the synth. I love it. And look, it's on a computer. So really cool work there from Human Boy. Thank you. I'll add it to the wonderful room in my mind with all of these portraits. And thank you also to Kiro, the blue of the future. So I was talking about Kiro's, uh, sorry, about uh, Rannick Steer's work here. They liked my description. You know, it's funny. that I call it the cool blue of the future. It's a. It was something I came up with when I was 18 or 19. Uh, kind of, you know, no dream, no nothing, but just kind of poetic inspiration. I just, I, I thought there's something that's called the cool blue of the future. So it's awesome to see this on my screen here, uh, full circle, and uh, and a bit of a Kiro beat who is like professional uh, techno individual. So all to say, uh, super rad, and thank you everybody. Uh, for for everything, for making me feel loved. Makes me happy. Super thrilled to welcome back Zach Krevit from Zora. Zora's on fire. Zora's on fire. I think I may put my next release on Zora. Uh, Zora's exciting. Uh, there's, it's just, uh, you know, I put out a couple of, you know, just like the life of an uh, artist here. So I put out a couple of works on Object uh, over the weekend, and you think, well, maybe collectors, you know, uh, need to catch their breath a little bit, and what? So this is the beauty of being multi-chain, because then I can go, oh, well, the collector's on Zora. Maybe I put out a free mint on Zora, and then I'm thinking, oh, and actually I should put something out on Solana, and so this kind of gives everybody a break. So there's a lot to be said for this whole multi-chain uh, thing. We'll see how it goes for me. Probably will depend mostly on the art more than anything, uh, but it's interesting. So all to say, Zora's been doing a ton of work here. A ton of development. They're turning the site increasingly into a social media site, which I think is incredibly wise. I consider these uh, NFT sites very much to be like futuristic uh, social media sites. Instead of sharing your lunch, you're sharing your the contents of your imagination uh, and selling it. I mean, that's like a 10x uh, situation here from your traditional social media. So thrilled to welcome Zach back, and I'm thrilled he's coming back on Digital Art and Zora. I want to talk about Zach's art too. Zach is doing some AI. I want to talk about all that and developments at Zora. So if you're on Zora and you're excited about Zora and you're curious about Zora, uh, check out that show. That'll be Wednesday at 9.30 in New York, 3.30 in Berlin. Uh, let's go to the comments here quickly. We're only at 13 minutes. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, Coach Kyoto, it's hard to overestimate what you're doing for the community. Thank you for your work, Adrian. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, and uh, yeah, very happy uh, to hear that. Uh, Fornax Void, absolutely epic show. Also very excited to be there. Uh, also very exciting to be in there. And I think we have two, actually, Fornax Void. Fornax Void released uh, an epic work there over the weekend. Another epic work. I think the JV 1080 or 2080. You know, I used to have the XP80. Actually, it's at my friend's place in Ottawa, which is a Roland synth. Complicated synth, actually. That was my first synth. Very complicated first synth. If you, uh, But all to say, uh, Fornax Void is using the JV 2080. That is the synth engine in the XP80. So I know it well. And Fornax Void uses it quite well, I, I dare say, better than I ever did. Uh, Rune Tune. Uh, so this is a long comment, but let's uh, kind of graze through it here. You couldn't have chose a better work to start the show. Why this? So referring to the Gloom Tube here, this incredibly moving work here by Gloom Tube. Again, this, and we'll get into this, I think, in Runetune's comment, but I see Gloom Tube as a satirist, kind of similar to William Burroughs, uh, you know, kind of like these edgy uh, satirists. You know, I consider Turkarak a kind of satirist. I consider Die With The Most Likes. They're kind of in the satirist category, you know, as far in, in terms of thematically or content 
uh, wise. Uh, let's let's continue. Why this? You ask in reference to this piece starting the show. Well, it's a wonder, wonderful work of art for many reasons. In my mind, Gloomtube is a kind of realist of the 2020s. For me, the answer to why this is this. We are inundated with bright flashing gifts on a day-to-day while the social media blasts our sensory with images all fighting for our attention. Gloomtube holds my attention in a way that feels authentic, effortless, humble, and quiet. His choice of imagery and subject matter speak to, to many of us who live on or have lived on the fringe of society. Sigils Under the Bridge depicts a deserted space under an overpass on the outskirts of a city, somewhere littered with the remnants of people who have appropriated the space for their own designs. These kind of spaces and these types of places capture my imagination in a nostalgic way. They take me back to younger days when I wandered the streets and spaces abandoned by the city. These spaces were occupied by transients, kids with nothing to do, gains, graffiti writers, and others. Rarely would you cross paths with, with any of these people, but the evidence of their being there was always on view. Yeah, beautifully put. You got to love the absence of people. Uh, that was a very kind of accurate uh, way of uh, portraying this. Like a cave painting, tools and belongings and art are scrolled on, scrawled on the wall. It was all there to be discovered. It lights up the imagination. The seen and the unseen come together in ways only logic and the imagination can assume. Additionally, Gloom has over time developed such an incredibly unique style. Unique style. On the surface, it's seemingly simple, but as an artist, it's an all. Ab- but as an artist, and this is a key thing. Uh, but as someone who's actually tried to make images, you know, everybody has their opinions on art and everything, but. A, but as an artist, you know, there's a little bit more credibility. It's always back to my example about the plumber. You know, me saying, like, would I know what, you know, the best plumber and all this sort of thing, or would a plumber? Of course, the plumber, I might have my idea of who the best plumber is from my experience and whatnot, but really, who's going to know more? It's the plumber, I, I, one would argue. And again, we're not in the province of absolutes. Uh, here we're in the we're in the realm of story and qu- qualitative data, uh, not quantitative. Again, this isn't math or uh, geometry or physics. So all to say though, I, I love how you put that there, Rudin. But as an artist, it's all abundantly clear that this isn't as simple as it looks. That Gloom Tomb is making a lot of aesthetic decisions that go under the radar. Beautifully put here, uh, Rune Tune. The textual variety is rich. The use of blur and focus to simulate depth of field, the colors, the content. I could go on, but I'll save that for another day. Well, maybe on Wednesday, because of course Rune Tune uh, co-hosts the Wednesday show. Maybe we'll come back to this comment. Bravo, Gloomtube from Rune Tune. A lot of likes there on that post. Bosque Grazia is always a pleasure to watch your show. It's a pleasure to have you, Bosque. And I think we have a few shots from from the uh, residency there today, as well as I think uh, Cyanotype. Rada, awesome to hear from you as ever. And more Lacos, loved that work. Absolutely loved that work. And just quickly here, we'll take a look at the Twitter comments. I fell asleep and missed the end of the gloom tube auction on this one. Great little storytelling piece. Uh, indeed, and Rorich is, you know, early gloom tube and and uh, collector and many others, myth uh, and others. Cedar plank, hi Pokebelly, thanks so much. This so of course waffles here. Thanks. The software is a brokenish version of Fantavision from '87. Just kind of broken like this this screen of mine here, uh, or this camera. Uh, very interesting. And here's even a link here to the Wikipedia. So actually, there's another one we have here. So thanks for the information, Cedar Plank. Just awesome to hear. Intended the lizard one to be a foundation piece, but foundation rendered the video with too much compression. So minted it to Zora as a small addition. So we'll throw a copy. Awesome. In your wallet later. Awesome. Thank you, Waffles. AK Dell, hello, my friend. Can you see my last? So again, uh, as I put here, if you have work you want shown uh, or to be seen, uh, feel free to post it in the community. Everybody's invited. Uh, there's, uh, you know, no spam yet. So once that happens, we'll cross that bridge or uh, whatnot. But so far, everybody, it's just awesome to uh, get. So if you want to kind of submit work, so to speak, hesitate to use that word, but in, or bring in, if you want your work to be seen among other artists, this is a great place to do it in the community here. What if indeed Human Boy and Wojak, I think we have a work by Wojak today, Richard Prince's work was a great new personal discovery. It's very interesting, Richard Prince's work. I was very skeptical of Richard Prince 
uh, as far as all the cowboys and everything. I just, like, skeptical in the senses. I just didn't love the work. I was skeptical of him as an artist. I didn't know that much about him, though, admittedly, uh, you know, 20 years ago. I've become, he's actually probably one of my biggest influences now, weirdly. I'd say in physical painting, you know, his use of inkjet, the use of uh, the uh, gel, heavy-duty gel, I think is what he's using with liquid acrylics. I mean, that's some real alpha, actually, for all the physical painters out there. It's as beautiful, if not more interesting, than oil paint. And I say the reason... I think the reason why is because it's kind of new and slightly different, but you still get all the texture and the richness uh, of oil paint. But if you do this little process with the heavy duty liquid gel and then the, or the heavy duty uh, gel and then mixing it with the liquid acrylics, like a golden liquid acrylic and quality matters on acrylic paint. Otherwise it all breaks down and it's kind of useless. Uh, yeah, so all to say traveling through the mediums, Richard Prince, Warhol, again, a uh, very, very interesting artist. Uh, you know, so just, yeah, I'm glad glad you're enjoying that work. Uh, Denise, awesome to hear from you. And Wojak, another stellar episode, awesome to hear. And True Face, always good content. Bravo, Maestro, Pokebellion. You know what's kind of nice about this? Like, I finish that show and I go, well, sometimes you just got to hand, hand in your homework, so to speak, and that's all there is. And it's really nice when people... This is kind of a metaphor for me, this whole show, because so many times I've handed in the show and went, eh, that's just a okay episode. And then people, you know, then you get really nice comments. Same with art. And you go, oh, you know, again, it's back to this idea. We're not necessarily the best judges of our own output. Uh, which is just an interesting phenomenon. Skull, uh, just wanted to post this as it pertains to established institutions coming into the blockchain art conversation, in this case, MoCA Toronto. I think that's a newer institution in Toronto that actually started in the last 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, after I moved, actually. Uh, they were building it when I was living in Toronto. So this is super interesting and speaks to our whole discussion that you know institutions as Bitcoin is... Hovering, hovering near the record here, another day, I think it just broke through 65K here. Institutions are all of a sudden getting, you know, feeling, I don't know if they, I'd call it FOMO, but they're dipping their toes in the water so that they're not totally left empty handed uh, should this thing take off and all of a sudden the world changes. The what if? What if? Then where are all these institutions if this thing takes off? What if this is, you know, so let's continue here. For next void. Exciting curation. Love your show. Just awesome to hear. Fornax Void, for those that don't know, I learned this while doing this show, is like a total classic artist in this whole digital art area. A lot of people know him and, you know, video games and everything. I, I think I learned about Fornax Void from Haiti Rockets collection. Greatest Tanuki Poco. I think the sigils referred in Gloomtomb's work are in the graffiti, which makes perfect sense. Primarily, I believe, the 55515 and the Tezo symbol. So that makes perfect sense here. And yeah, there it is. So those are that's what I kind of originally thought. But I, yeah, I thought, yeah. So thank you for that. Just my humble opinion. I, th I suspect you're right. Uh, the Burnsy Witch piece really caught my eye. That still life, thank you, ain't nothing. I agree. Uh, you know, but I would really need some strong sedatives to be able to watch one hour of Pokeball to see if he talked about my art. <laughs> well, again, just post it in the community. And I can't, you know, share everything in the community. I still kind of have to curate it for those that are posting in the community. But I am kind of, I'm looking for reasons to bring it in. I'm trying to find space where I can. And just because I don't include it one day doesn't mean it's not on my radar. Sometimes it's just a matter of the flow of the curation. And sometimes it fits in, sometimes it doesn't. So there's always a balance there. Uh, just so people understand how I'm kind of going about that. Mo, awesome to hear from you and just really cool to watch Mo grow. Mo SHIT, already at almost 7,000 followers. Tornado Rodriguez, uh, the work you do is perfect. Thanks for all you do. And we have a ton of Tornado works actually today. The win the Object 98 works. A glitch, what if, bulls. Uh, I find it interesting the fact of how AI is replicating the signs of the passing time when speaking about the strengthening piece uh, strange thing piece, right? Uh, so uh, emulating the cracks in the oil paint. Hopefully this unfreeze is good. Uh, but in a but in an utmost instant process. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Because those cracks in oil paint that we see on the Mona Lisa that happens over centuries. 
five centuries, 500 years, whereas the AI is replicating it. And then I'd argue, strange thing is even pushing it. You know, like, like we've seen, again, what I call almost fetishistic, you know, paint flaking off of, you know, this physicality of the paint. Maybe the cond condensation of time is a hyper postmodern characteristic. Yeah, like I, I would say, uh, because there's no referent or referent, because there's no reality that this is pointing to directly, right? Again, Kuhn's we could call postmodern because he's pointing directly in his work of the Mona Lisa, his reproduction of the Mona Lisa by him and his team with the blue ball, the gazing ball. That we could call postmodern because it's a copy of the painting itself. Uh, Leonardo, he's comp copying uh, the uh, Mona Lisa, the woman, uh, in the figure onto his paint. So there's the first copy. Then we get the Kuhn's copy. With, say, Strange Thing, there's no referent. There's no th nothing that's directly being copied. Uh, it's being, you could argue it's being simulated. Like, is that the character? There's no referent, as they'd say, I believe. I and mean, this is all based on memory. Of, you know, and I never went too deep into critical thinking, but I think it's good to keep it simple uh, and understandable. So all to say, uh, I think you're on to say, yes, I agree. Little Cakes. Oh, I guess I won't. Oh, yes, I want to hear you talk to August Ground. Awesome. So, yeah, and I need to reach out to August Ground to do a space. And Enlightener, thank you for the comments. So, uh, and finally here, is there an Artist Journal Warpcast channel? Would love to join over there. Good vibes. And this is such an awesome idea. I, I'm still trying to get the habit of getting on Warpcast like I'm on there. But I don't have, like, there's a lot of social media to deal with here. So I'm always very, I've been dipping my toes in the water there. I haven't posted the last couple of shows. I should. But maybe the best way to do it is actually to create a Warpcast channel. But I have to figure out how to do that. You know, and I still have the newsletter on my mind. So there's a lot to manage for one person here. Uh, but I, I love it. Because maybe that can be a revenue source as well. You put the Zora link to the video which I haven't been doing. I need to catch up on that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, there's a way you're already in the crypto thing. You can just pick up your uh, you know, NFT of this video. How, how fun and cool is that, right? Even if you're only you know, selling a few. Uh, Emperor's Trash, uh, who I do follow, by the way. That is an X glitch. The hardest part of the whole game, still post-2021, is if art doesn't sell out instantly in pump and price, that people, even on a subconscious level, view it as a failure. Which is wholly untrue, but makes marketing art after the initial release incredibly hard. It goes so far, I've gotten messages of condolences even because my sharp objects dropped didn't sell that much right away. Like, first of all, don't do that. Just say nothing or share the work with people and help sell it. Second of all, I was in Paris for the first time in my life when it dropped overwhelmed with everything. So, so all to say, uh, third, it's cutting edge drop and work thematically and technology. And I know going into it, minting would be slow. Really, though, just because work doesn't sell out instantly doesn't mean it isn't valuable or meaningful or going to sell eventually. Indeed, uh, yeah, so uh, all to say, I think we're incredibly blessed here that, you know, frankly, that anybody buys our digital art at all. Like, that's how I feel about it. And, you know, I've bought a ton. I've spent an entire Bitcoin and more, you know, back when it was a lot cheaper on, you know, art on Tezos. So, you know... Uh, but all to say, I think we should be grateful uh, to uh, that we really sell anything and this whole idea that if you don't, you know, yeah, like, I mean, this is, it's kind of like, re to Empress Trash's point, it's like reality check time. Uh, go ask your friends in the physical art uh, world how their sales are going. Okay. Uh, Shelly Preston, so kind of a PSA here. I've been asking public service announcement. I've been asking for a lot and I appreciate everything so much. I only have five days left in this shelter with my family. If you can donate anything, I would appreciate it. So go help out Shelly Preston there. Uh, Fallen on hard times. Uh, so uh, just go to Shelly Preston's Twitter feed. Uh, Cosmo de Medici. So there's been this conversation here about, uh, interestingly, you know, uh, that... You know, does one ETH equal one ETH? And what the uh, conversation is about is uh, basically during the bull market of 2021, what I think happened, the reason why digital art is so expensive to begin with, in my opinion, like in the, the crypto sphere, is because what you had was because one ETH did equal one ETH. 
in 2020, 2021, where an X copy would sell for, let's say, five ETH when ETH was 100 bucks or less. And then in 2020, 2021, when ETH was worth $5,000, all of a sudden that five ETH, and then plus the you know appreciation in X copies work, but let's just call it five ETH, all of a sudden that's going for $25,000. But there is always this sense, like I remember when I was uh, logged on or onboarded onto Super Rare, the, I was told, actually, I asked directly about this question, is should I, if ETH goes up in price, uh, should I adjust or should I adjust my prices? And actually, the answer was no. Uh, it's ETH is kind of like as we put it in the conversation, the reserve currency, so to speak. So now with ETH going back up, I, I think the reality is is uh, we're it's the market. Like the market is willing to pay a certain amount, and it does kind of come down to the U.S. dollar price. And But I also think it has to do with speculation and what a lot of collectors, I'm speculating here, or just like thinking out loud here, uh, but what I think happened is right now, it's really hard to offload your art that you spent three ETH for, right? And a lot of artists are seeing that because all of a sudden ETH is worth $10,000. In a sense, investors and collectors have been chastened by this uh, bear market. And so... It's, you know, all of a sudden it's, it's, it's not like it was in 2021 where it's all of a sudden this is the new paradigm and this could go, you know, we could hit a Bitcoin $500,000 in 2021 was sort of how people were thinking. This is a super cycle, meaning it's not going to come back down. It's just going to go to the moon. Uh, now, investors and collectors have been chastened, I would argue. So all of a sudden that changes the equation you know, because all of a sudden, if you're spending an ETH on an artwork, which is above $3,500 now, uh, like just an ETH is th over $3,500 US, uh, that's no small, that's not small potatoes, as they would say. So I think, you know, the US dollar value, it's it's the market. It's like, if, if people think that the art they buy is going to be worth more, they'll pay you that much money because they'll be confident that they can get the money back. So it's that's the real kind of measure. And in 2021, they thought, it would, you know, people who spent 100 ETH on an artwork thought that they could, uh, you know, get their money back and that they'd get maybe 150 ETH. And maybe in some cases they did. But if they held on, they probably aren't going to get that, at least not for a while, unless Bitcoin really blasts through here to 100, 100K. Uh, but all to say, you know, and people were collecting a ton just finally on this in the bear market when ETH was low. So all of a sudden to pay a, an ETH for an artwork when ETH is at 1500 bucks isn't the same kind of investment. It's not the same kind of risk, at least psychologically. Uh, so ETH is a small factor in most collectors' decision, but it usually goes see ETH price check. Again, I think this is after the bear market of 2022. This is how people think. I don't think people thought like this in 2020, 2021. So I, I think that's my theory on what happened. I think the psychology shifted and that the bear market sharpened every the collector's minds as to reevaluating how much is being spent here within the context of US dollars. Okay, so therefore in our current market, one could argue US dollar price is a little more important than it was in the last one, but not entirely. And I think that's why we got finally just such expensive art in 2021 was uh, all of a sudden ETH was worth like $5,000 at the peak there. And, you know, stuff that people paid 80 bucks for or paid, you know, 50 bucks for their ETH or less, these ETH whales and all of a sudden they're, you know. So I think that's what happened with the art values. And we're still, I'd argue, benefiting from this. Even though the prices have come down, people aren't spending as much, we're still totally benefiting as artists uh, on, from these high prices, even if it's cut in half or a quarter to a certain degree. Like, that's how insane everything got. Nearly every collector I know buys this way. I feel most who say that are that say they don't are lying. Space case, one ETH equals one ETH is at best flawed and at worst a total fallacy. It only works if it goes both ways, which it obviously does not. Artists were sold this concept by collectors when ETH went from $4,000 to $1,000 and told the adjusting price for US do dollars was normie because, of course, they could buy the work for cheaper. Now they're being told their prices are too high and they need to price in 3x moves in ETH and Sol. So again, 
if they think they're going to make money off it, they'll pay for it. It's really that simple. So uh, it's all just a value. I think it's just a reassessment. There's also something to be said about the collectors who were here in the very first wave buying works for one ETH when it was $250, who didn't flinch to pay one ETH or more when it went to 3000 This is also a small subset of collectors, though. I understand both points of view and have totally dabbled in crypto-centric pricing strategies myself, but ultimately have come to realize that USD is really the guiding factor, especially when many artists have to cash out in real time to live. And again, I feel like this is more true after 2022, the bear market. Uh, so, yeah, so all to say, uh, more empathy for artists who are realizing what's like, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's worth too much discussion here. You open X, people say one ETH is not one ETH anymore. This is unknown collector. Others told you never before to raise your prices when ETH was low. Some told you to mint one piece at a time. Now they're telling you best to just mint collections a few times a year. Yeah, this is madness as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is, uh, as an artist, the easiest thing in the world to do is be scarce because it means you don't need to make any work. And then it's like, how credible are you as an artist, right? So to me, there's like a direct correlation most of the time, not always, but between being prolific and your credibility as an artist. As I like to say for myself, when I'm making art, I feel like an artist, okay? But if I'm not making art, I don't really feel like an artist, right? So uh, yeah, don't, you know, everybody has to do what they want, but ultimately you want to make as much work as possible of high quality. Some tell you open editions build a big fan base. Others say it destroys your scarcity in prices. Again, I'm sort of all of the above. Uh, you know, what does this tell you? There will always be someone not satisfied with how you do things. Uh, take your own decisions. So all to say, uh, my personal opinion is that U.S. dollar base makes a lot of sense in a multi-chain future in general when crypto prices are significantly higher and also when we want to attract non-crypto native folks. I actually think it's in between. Like, I like I think uh, as the crypto goes up, the people feel richer who have that crypto, so they are willing to spend a little bit more, especially if they have sentimental attachment to that blockchain. There is a lot of tribalism in blockchain for those that might not realize so I do think there's a sense of if if you're a big like Sol artist, then I think you're you're gonna kind of ride the wave a little bit if Sol is going higher. Maybe not a hundred percent of the wave, but maybe a thirty percent ride of the wave in your prices, uh, and likewise on the way down. So all to say, it's an interesting uh, discussion here. Ed Marola had a comment. As far as I thought, this was actually quite brilliant. Uh, Because I kind of agree with it. As far as pricing, I go by only one simple rule. Never relist the same artwork below what someone already paid for it. Because, of course, if you don't sell out on a work, uh, an edition, the temptation is to lower the price and then maybe you sell the rest. But I think Ed's absolutely right. Because if you're a collector and you buy it at a certain price and the artist lowers it, that feels kind of lame from a financial point of view. So I thought that was actually quite brilliant, uh, Ed Marola's point. Cider motivated to be the best. Uh, so just some positive thoughts here. And maybe part of the reason Cider is such a great artist is the positive thinking there. So very interesting. I want to hit on that. Jerry Saltz, I found that about 90% of the people in the space of AI and NFT, and NFT emphatically do not want criticism. Their reactions to it prove it. I tried and tried. Once a guy hit me on my wrist and when, and when I walked past him, he yelled, hey, I make NFTs, need someone other than me. So all to say, you know, it's interesting. Like, I think from a PR point of view, it's awesome to have Jerry Saltz, but uh, like, I don't actually find the same thing. Interestingly, I, people want, uh, people want the, their art discussed. Maybe they don't want their art discussed from Jerry Saltz. Uh who knows? Uh, KF, Kyle Flemmer. Happy Sunday. Today I wrote a little essay about uh, Capin's or uh, Figment's art. His Nocturnal Fireflight collab with uh, with Empagnala and Empanalga and cultivating friendship on and off the blockchain. Give it a read. So another cool uh, work here from Kyle Flemmer. Look how gorgeous that work of art is. So Tezos Art Review number four. And this collaboration, look at Capin, you know, uh, you know, and you just think of the, uh, you think of the Tashin book that like, I mean, look at this, look at how gorgeous this is. You know, another interesting thing about books is 
how would you capture this in a book? Like it's it's a GIF, right? Like and it would still look really good. Uh, but you know, if it's moving, look at this. So uh, cool work, Kyle. Uh, that's on Medium. Bulls. Uh, another uh, video I made with more than 100 Argentinian NFT artists. No curation, just every Argentinian artist that came to my mind. 100 artists, 500 works, 5 per artist. This is really cool. Generate a QR code for every artist. Redirecting to Linktree or main hub. Last in, last tweet. Publicly uploaded for any crypto event to promote Argentinian artists or maybe just to impress your friends at all home. All artists have been asked for permission. So all to say, here it is. So you can check that out on YouTube. Just follow Bulls or at Dem underscore Woods. Koi, me and KL or FLP GFX, Felipe Filgueras, uh, we will talk soon. Pixel Fool back, piece on the back. So this is what I want to show here. Look at how cool this looks with the old frame. I don't know if you can see that. Look at how cool that looks. That contrast, uh, that is powerful. This is a really original way of displaying an artwork, isn't it? Like, could you imagine a show that was curated this way or like that was displayed this way with the old frames? Uh, very cool. I mean, from a conceptual level on the curator's part, very cool. I, I think Dems or Bulls, Dem Woods, uh, posted this in the community. Oil pastels are a really tricky material for a plotter. They break easily and need constant adjust, adjustment and attention, but the glow is just wild. Indeed, and I never get tired. Look at how cool that is, too, down here. Uh, so these plotters. And I guess what I wonder is probably this is going over top of what we're seeing at the bottom of the screen here. These are probably layers that are going to be put on top. I actually think the stuff at the bottom... Uh, is really speaking to me. Uh, again, uh, super interesting here. I made some paintings that are being exhibited by 37X Dubai. I haven't had much time to post about them, but here's a little tease. So never get tired of this stuff. And look, look at the great texture. And again, you get this natural contrast here between the exact exactness of the pen plotter, the robotic exactness, and then the random physicality of the tool. That's why I think part of the, the main reason, I would argue, as to why this stuff works uh, on such, in such a powerful way. And you could even argue putting the first layer is maybe better. Well, let's not go too far here. All to say, uh, very cool work. Here's Busque Gracias. The residency continues here. From last night, Burr Sector, Capau, bon, Bosquenitz, Bosquen, Bosque Chito, and Lucas Ox, Shyamalan, Zoen, Individuals, Neutro Arts. It's a party. Looks like they're making the music here, too. This is like the coolest art residency. Like, it's just very cool. It feels, I can feel the energy. That's why I keep showing this stuff. Here's another one. Everyday co-working and collaboration. Artists, nature, and mixed media techniques, talking analog and digital languages, 17 artists, three houses, two kids, 75 artworks, equal 1,100 mints, and link to Zora below. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's like, it's just pretty cool, pretty exciting, and yeah, that's, for me, this is head turning. Uh, continuing, Psycho. This is cool. This is my first infinite objects. So, and now, Infinite objects, I thought, are in usually in a plastic casing. When I received it, I was so happy that I could touch my digital art. Thank you so much, Studios We Are, for the amazing opportunity. So I'm not sure if this is just the dis how. I think maybe it's just right around here. Uh, so all to say, it looks really cool. And I'm not sure if this is the demo uh, image. Here it is. This is it. So there you see it. Uh, so a different kind of infinite objects than we're used to here. Look at how cool that looks. Uh, I think you just plug it in. So congrats to Psycho, also known as Score. Donia, a.k.a. Uh, Let's Glitch It. Tomorrow I start doing regular con giveaway contests for glitch camps. Notifications on. U.S. only to start in the process of applying for grants to make a worldwide a possibility. So again, just another window into these Let's Glitch It cams. Uh, just very cool. You can see this going somewhere, couldn't you? 
Sabato, uh, first experiments with the Let's Glitch It circuit bent camera. So Sabato getting to work here. I'm, I can just see a series coming out. Uh, I could just totally see that. Uh, so looking cool and nice and kind of uh, pixelated, but very analogish. Very cool. John Cates, Jim from Digital Art Center in Taipei, Taiwan. I don't think I showed this yet. If not, we'll show it again. My Glitch Western Noise Art Premiere Performance. So there is John Cates uh, at work in Taipei. And there is John Cates again on what looks like a tablet there. So very cool. The cowboy at work, John Cates. Here's Kristen Roos. Getting back into the simplicity of black and white. So just a window, you know, using ultra paint. We don't see a ton of people using ultra paint, I don't think. And again, you see that Photoshop, you see that Photoshop didn't invent this user interface. Interestingly, this is, looks like, uh, this looks like, uh, you know, from the late 80s, early 90s. This looks pre-Photoshop. Let's put it that way, the software. And so just very interesting and 2024 shapes by Kristen Roos getting a window, you know, working with the technology, you know, following the possibilities that the technology is offering. Again, we're back to dunamis, the potential, the potential power and possibility. Yuri, raw gods begging me not to add my, my, my dumb textures here, uh, which is hilarious. Although I, I kind of can't wait to see the textures here. Uh, what an awesome... Uh, this would actually really complement the gloom tube work actually quite a bit with just kind of all the stuff lying around uh, and just really cool. I can't wait to see this. And there's the octopus fishing. I can't wait to see the textures on this. And again, rustic digital art would hang really well in that show too. Uh, totally awesome. Now, this is interesting. For those that are loving the Object 98 canvas or the Zora canvas, looks like Base, uh, Base is also doing one. Mint Daily... Uh, which is the Coinbase uh, marketplace, I think, basepaint.xyz gallery. So how cool is that? So Cancino, uh, do you want to play with me? It looks like they made this on the Coinbase uh, blockchain called Base with their native uh, app. Pretty cool and love the subject matter, all of it, even down to the soccer game there. Uh, and there's the kid playing, just rad. Mech.txt, so some live painting here if you're curious to see how mech.txt works. What will be in the live painting? The step-by-step -step in my art process, how to use a quasi-tutorial. I'll run through the process by talking through the whole session, explaining the thinking behind the steps. Steps. See you there. So how cool is that? Uh, Mech.txt doing live pixel art painting. I assume pixel art. And Somfe adding two new models to the Fermata lineup, Dragonfly and Firefly. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Somfe is kind of making their own, uh, somehow making their own uh, technology here, mod, maybe these are mods, or maybe this is just how you buy it. Look at all these cameras in the background here too. Uh, just awesome, of course, Somfe doing a ton of analog video glitch. Uh, these guys always have rad studios. Pixel Symphony, so more uh, plotting here. A 21 second time lapse of a plot of the first mint of appearance and being. Part of the wonderful Earl Reno's collection, final plot in the post below. And again, just a window at the magic of plotters here. Uh, they're just uh, just a delight to look at here. And again, you get these kind of interesting, random, physical things that happen within all this exactness. Uh, still need to get a plotter. Still need to get a plotter or actually try someone's out. Put that on the list of things to do. All right, here, into the paintings we go. Uh, Sphere, this is by The Myth, Red and Black Collection. Look at this, just fill the page. The intensity. Uh, so Myth, of course, often doing the lemon head here. We'll see how, look at how huge this is too. This looks like it was made in Procreate. Look at the roughness too, the looseness, as my friend would say. Uh, so here we see some pixel, or some Procreate brushes, one assumes. Uh, with all of the mist style here, almost like these voodoo dolls. I think that's what you'd call them. And then almost haunted here. Uh, very, very cool. So, uh, wow. What a piece by myth. Kind of a devilish kind of look to it here. And the intensity. Look at this. Kind of back to this expressionism. You know, it's like digital expressionism. 
out here. Uh, very interesting work. And you even got to love this kind of design aspect here of the circles. And even the checkerboard that is outlined. Uh, just beautiful work from Myth. This only, there's Rorich on the scene. Very consistent in, in Rorich's collecting and his collecting. Getting it for a song of $98 for this one of one Myth. I remember paying like 300 for a Myth. So that is a stellar deal. And I still feel like I got a great deal. Uh, here is Las Ladelmas, uh, Wildest Dream, so New Mint. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Really nice job, actually. I'm, I'm so superficial on these things. The blue page and the orange button uh, and the black text and the font are brilliant. Let's look at the artwork. Uh, so look at this beautiful kind of red and the uh, sea here. Kind of a surrealist artwork here. Uh, and sharks in the sea of blood. And here a bunny, almost like a Hello Kitty type bunny with really long kind of vinyl boots here, Adidas jacket, kind of this interesting tea party of sorts, just a beautiful work here. This is a free mint on Zora, and look at this over here on the right, this ladder coming up through the grass, through the ground, and again, kind of this Alice in Wonderland checkerboard here, different, interestingly, uh, perspective here on this it's almost like this is a wall painting in this scene here. A uh, very interesting work, but it's ambiguous. Uh, it is poetic. Uh, very cool work there from Las Delmas. Uh, Gloom to, with another work, Mozzarella Dinner. A sad dinner here in North America with some purified water. Hilarious. And there's a sigil again. Another clue, the 55515, hang in there, baby. And then maybe some sort of delivery here with, uh, and there's a tablet. And here is Gloom Tube, the Tezos artist, eating the mozzarella stick here for, you know, dinner. So interesting piece, 75 Tezos cents, uh, edition of 100, still available. How many are available? It looks almost sold out here. 17 still available. It's pretty reasonable. Juan Armando, this is by Bazaya. Another cool painting here. Juan Roman Requelm with a bit of Maradona. It does have a touch of Maradona in it, doesn't it? Interestingly. So another cool painting. I think Bazaya works on the phone amazingly. And here you can see uh, some revo, maybe that says revolution here in the background in this nice kind of oil stick texture. And just an interesting, beautiful painting from Bazaya with the great leopard print. Always cool. Always, always cool. This is an edition of 10 and transferred maybe to previous collectors there. So that is pretty cool. Again, it, definitely a Maradona feel. Uxine doing some extremely cool experimentation here. Uh, so just super cool, keeping it nice and loose, mixing styles a little bit, tribes. Uh, you see the crypto art kind of skull, the, uh, you know, the friars halo here and everything kind of nice and roughly pixelated here some nice kind of painterliness here gorgeous work minted on gorgeous color minted on x or not minted just posted on x here is slava 3 pseudo measurements stuck waiting i don't think there's oh yeah there is volume here let me get some kind of a classic diner shot interesting mix here too Really mixing a lot of things, uh, Slava 3, interestingly. Uh, mixing different, which is really cool. Like, I, I call this exporting, loosely speaking. Like, taking uh, images or uh, elements from different, you know, creating different elements in different softwares and then kind of smushing them together in a new work. That's what I see going on here. Very cool. And... Slava 3 has been doing that uh, for uh, in different ways in different works. So uh, only eight minted. Uh, may have been a, uh, a small uh, mint here uh, or limited for maybe a certain amount of money rather than the free mint. Not sure. This is interesting. Lord Neutron. Lord Neutron. I thought this was a pretty cool kind of metaphysical work here with this stage set, the large Rubik's Cube with the skull, the jack-in-the-box springing out. Uh, pretty awesome work here from Lord Neutron. This was posted on X. Never seen that one before. It could be an older work. This was a powerful work, I've thought, by uh, by Wasteman Goldminovich. 
of the failed artists. This is number 75, Sellout, with a Burger King hat rather than the McDonald's. So maybe getting a job at Burger King and feeling like a sellout here. And sellout on the cast. There is the half-eaten hot dog. I was saying, where's the cigarette? And here's a cigarette butt. Uh, so, you know, the narrative continues here with the failed artist. You know, nothing to say here. Uh, I thought quite a poetic piece here. 20 Tezos, uh, this is a one of one. You know, it's pretty rare to get a Wasteman Gold Minovich for 20 Tezos here. Uh, one of one. There's not many. I, I think I have at least one, uh, yeah, a prize in my collection here. Another work by Wasteman Gold Minovich. We have a couple. Tezos artist on furlough. I don't think we saw this one. So maybe relating to our, you know, moving on from McDonald's here. So furloughed, losing his, uh, his job uh, here, an interesting kind of empty landscape here. That's two Tezos edition of 10. And this was a rougher one. I thought the content was so brilliant, though. Interesting. Branch of McDonald's on fire. Like, this sold to who? Uh, for six sixty six. dollars um, Like, this is a theme that this almost looks like a close-up of a work right, that Wasteman was working on, but you can make, like, big narrative paintings here, Wasteman Goldminovich, uh, of this theme, and I think this is just, uh, this is a hit. Like, I want to see, like, I would love to see, like, 10 different versions of this, and I think they would all sell. You put them at auction, they'd probably do quite well. Field Artist 74, Self-Portrait, so there are a few pixel artworks here, too. What is this called? A Quiet Night at Home. So a sad, again, you think of, uh, you think of Gloom Tube here, sleeping outside the McDonald's here in this very fun uh, kind of pixel art video game work. And there is the failed artist with the bloodshot eyes in pink. Uh, and there is the cigarettes. And there's the hot dog. Hilarious, kind of. The plants growing through. And at the McDonald's there, uh, this went to Uxine for... Uh, 20 Tezos, edition of one. And again, uh, McSad World. So we're kind of back to this idea. Yeah, here's the homeless person. Here's a person, well, it looks like a park ranger, but maybe the McDonald's worker. And someone maybe giving the finger to both these people at McDonald's here, the guy in the business suit here. Not sure what this yellow thing is. Uh, McSad World, indeed. And this is edition of three for only 50 cents. Uh, pretty reasonable. And here's one more, the failed artist 76. All of it belongs to you and me. And here's the failed artist uh, in a loop that is going by McDonald's here with the fries on the head. So a pretty fun, you know, uh, direction here with the pixel art. This went to Ugo for only three Tezos, edition of one, one of one. Now here's Anis Abdin, who for some reason wasn't showing up in my Twitter feed, who puts out work like almost every day. Like I'd be showing it every episode. So all to say, I'm glad to kind of rediscover Annis' work, put him on notifications here so I actually see it. Uh, just another beautiful pixel art work from Annis Abden. And look at the composition here. With uh, And I believe this is all from scratch from the imagination. Uh, if I remember right, uh, and even the animation, like this is very manually done. Uh, we have a Twitter space, which actually I have, uh, I'm going to upload that very soon. Actually, I have all of them gathered together. All the uh, uh, Twitter spaces are gathered together. They're ready to upload. I'll literally do it one day. So one of these days they're all going to be available. Here's another one, Anis Abden from March 2nd. Just to give you an idea, and look at how beautiful the four on the floor pixelation in the background to create that kind of almost that Renaissance like, you know, distance of the mountain. You know, uh, very interesting. And then a cool kind of, you know, I think nature is Annis Abden's kind of main subject matter here, as you can see. Uh, and this beautiful light of the moon shining here, this orange moon shining on the water. I think you have some complementary colors here orange and blue. Uh, beautiful. Here is Element Lee. Eaves are below and pillars are above, waiting for the wind and rain to come. So another kind of enigmatic work here, nicely zoomed in. Like this is something I'm paying attention to. Like how much do you magnify your pixel artwork? Uh, this is nicely, you know, 
like what I do is I literally like I open it up on the screen. I see what it looks like at 100% and I go, is this what I want to see when I'm kind of looking at other people's work in terms of size? So again, kind of this is a nice size, you know, and another kind of enigmatic work. Adding again a bit more color, a bit more volume, a bit more space. This is Tentezos edition of 20 from Element Lee. And this was quite brilliant here too. I love this work. Uh, hide the blade 200 pixels by 200 pixels with this awesome portrayal of the knife going into the pot of water or liquid here and then getting pixelated out. A very poetic work. Again, I think working on the, the smartphone, if I'm not mistaken. And here is Cedar Plank, Glass Disco. Name the reference, get a copy for free. <laughs> get a copy grad gratis. Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, so yeah, interesting as ever with the kind of broken down version of Fanavision. It's interesting to see, remember Byte by Bit? I haven't seen any work by Byte by Bit recently, but uh, it's interesting how different artists use this tech. Cause yeah, this is Fanavision. I almost recognize the rhythm of the software terms of the timing it you know again if you know bite by bite by bits work from you know 100 episodes ago or more uh then you'll recognize this rhythm that i'm talking about here very cool work from uh is that john travolta in saturday night fever i wonder if it is there is a hairdo component perhaps glass disco that's by cedar plank and this is Waffles. I wasn't sure, or Cedar Plank. I wasn't sure if this is a new one, Hair Burglar. I don't remember seeing it, but again, one of these kind of kids paint programs here. Uh, just awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, again, the doodle style that we know and love here. Hair Burglar. Sunday Pasta. So Tornado Rodriguez with her works on the Object Paint 98. Kind of turning heads here, including mine, uh, edition of 10. They're all selling out, uh, and these sold out at two Tezos, 22 cents, uh, two, 22 Tezos cents. And like Tezos is at almost at a dollar fifty here. Uh, so again, you know, within that earlier con context of, you know, I think artists do ride up somewhat with the prices of the crypto, maybe not to the same extent as they did two years ago, but there is a benefit. Uh, so I'll just say uh, very cool work here, like for Object 98, like this is awesome. And actually, I think we act here, look at a window into the process here, 8 p.m. Argentina. So getting started here, this kind of makes it all, uh, you start to say, oh, okay. When you see the looseness of the beginning, you start going, oh, okay, maybe I can do this. Uh, this is cool. Uh, so just very cool here. As you see, these are all sold out. Nice secondary on them. Uh, Tornado Rodriguez is having an amazing time doing this. Uh, so there's another person to bring on the spaces. Uh, I think we had Tornado on, maybe he was in partnership with someone. Anyways, time for Tornado to come back. Uh, I will reach out as well as August Ground. Rock Delgado and see if there is interest. I thought this was brilliant too. Uh, the synth... Uh, this is just a super, really cool work here with the synth plugged into the amp, you know, maybe a little record player here, the guitar, uh, just another really nicely done work here. Uh, so again, the power of trying new softwares out as a digital artist, just as an artist, trying out new mediums, trying out new things can really just reinvigorate, you know, get you really excited about what you're doing. And this is brilliant, you know. So here's another one. It was worth the wait. And uh, so just really, really cool work. Again, at a bar, the one-eyed people, the three-eyed, uh, almost like a dally clock there. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. So just super cool. Here's one more, Dream Vacations. Uh, and yeah, different size on this one. This one looks a little smaller, right? Uh, interestingly, and there's the bath uh, and maybe playing video games. <laughs> so all too hilarious. Uh, Demon Kiss. This is Ed Marola. Daemon, Demon Kiss. Uh, just a brilliant, uh, gorgeous work of art here. And with that epic frame here. Uh, we were talking frames. And they're uh, just brilliant with the mask. Uh, you know, in the Inferno, there's a monster that comes uh, above to one of the uh, circles, leaves its head on, and it's an uh, embodiment of the hypocrite which has a mask on it that's kind of a smiley face. That's what this kind of reminds me of. Kind of a mask. I mean, that's a pretty obscure reference there. And then look at this awesome kind of demon with 
em- empty kind of wings here or see-through wings uh, kissing this other kind of demon figure uh, with people looking on. Uh, isn't that interesting? Look at this. Again, another canvas here. Another canvas. Uh, that is an addition of 11 and one sold to Ah Heck there so far. Just listed. RJ, edition of one, and this went for 35 Tezos to Mikey Wilson. I think it's called Christina World. Interesting composition here, as you'll see with the computer breaking up the noise here, the snow. And then again, this is based on Andrew Wyeth, Christina's World from 1948. Christina World V1. So maybe some different editions coming out. Here's Brain Dead. How are we doing here? I'm going to speed up. I'm going to try and get the shows down to an hour as soon as next show. Uh, so there will be a lot more cutting. Uh, maybe not as many. Co- Anyways, let's continue. How to get higher instruction panel, brain dead. Uh, interesting uh, work here. Another cool, because of course, brain dead did that large work that we started with a few shows ago with all of the uh, user interfaces and everything. Uh, pretty cool uh, work here. Pretty interesting. I think that's sold out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was sold out at 250 uh, on uh, primary. So that's an addition of 10. Here is Visor, if I'm not mistaken, The Illusion of Time. I don't think we saw this one. So again, uh, pretty cool, interesting work with kind of like a big, I think you'd call that a grandfather clock with a lock on the door and then different renditions of time here. The key the hourglass, and maybe the rabbit even being kind of a surreal, psychedelic, uh, and then the clock, the digital clock at the top right. Interesting piece. Edition of 10. Sabato picking one up here uh, for three Tezos. François Gamma with another one of these super cool uh, walking figures within the kind of screen uh, environment here. A really uh, cool work here. Uh, Quam 8, edition of 21, 250 on our shopping network of the soul here. Uh, Walk PX, uh, Francoise Gamma again. Look at this one. Uh, isn't this awesome? Isn't this awesome? Uh, there's something about it and just endlessly inventive here on how to do the walking figure with different renditions. Walk PX, uh, this sold for three Tezos. There's an addition of 30, one gone. And another one by Francoise Gamma, Landvix, number four. So we've seen one kind of similar before, kind of nice small work here of a tree in a landscape. Interesting work there. Reikes with a few more here. Now we may have seen some of these before, but look at this. There's something wonderfully gorgeous about these pixel art uh, works of trees and what look like kind of cherry blossoms, kind of nicely, this is on exchange.art. Uh, kind of nicely, almost impressionistic in a kind of, who would it be? There's an art, artist whose name is escaping me right now who used to be on my grandma's wall. Uh, I will remember. Uh, so here's a more pixel artwork of flowers and trees. Uh, just beautiful work from A Secret Garden by Ray Kays. Uh, this is for one and a half Sol. Auction ends, and I think there's a bid. Or no, the auction has started, but I think... Uh, some, so this is also at one and a half salt, a blossoming journey. Uh, but I think one of these sold actually already uh, on Solana. I was, remember seeing that. And here's another one. So uh, just really cool kind of pixel artwork here. And this is also one and a half salt. I'm pretty sure one of these sold or there's another one that we haven't looked at. Love comes again. So just really cool work from Ray Kays here. Uh, again, pixel art and nature just are a natural fit. And look at how gorgeous this is. Uh, so beautiful work there. This is Actel, and this is 51, uh, and this is Kyoto, Japan. Some more pixel art here, and we can zoom in. Kind of nice how we can zoom in like this on this one. And you can see all the beautiful pixelation here on what looks like almost, and a little bit of dithering there in the gradient, on what looks like a kind of a Japanese print of sorts. This is an open edition, 17 minted so far, two Tezos. Nice work. And here is Bulls on Zora. And I wish we could make this bigger here. So this is a GIF. And you might be surprised to see here the dancing ants from Photoshop, as they're called, the selection tool. But being basically a screen record, seemingly, to get these outlines, very interesting move here. Because, of course, you can't export those. You have to record the screen. So interesting piece here. 
interesting experimentation. This is on Zora, 30 minted so far, and one day trip to La Loma Quemada. Uh, very cool. And here's Sophie Ogura with another kind of experimental, kind of cool, uh, you know, what's the word here? It's not rough or loose, but just this kind of, I guess we'd call it loose uh, pixel artwork here, which is kind of nice, kind of painterly is kind of what I'm going for here. Uh, nice pixelation everywhere. Uh, just an interesting piece. Uh, this is 840 edition of six. There is two left. So nice work there. Here's Lorna Mills, Pomme de Terre, which again is the name of a racehorse likely. And of course that means uh, potato in French. And here is a little girl on a swing just hanging out. So another fun one from Lorna Mills. That's 20 Tezos and that is an edition of 30. Look at this work by Mumble Boy, Three Feet Man in the Corner Shop, kind of painterly. Let's see what's going on here in these kind of like blurred out, interestingly, and look at this. Again, seemingly a combination of physical and digital, you know, uh, cutting of sorts. And here it looks like digital painting on top, but in other areas, you almost see the physicality of these, uh, what looks like paper or magazines. Interesting composition here too, when you zoom out. Very interesting work here from Humble Boy. Six Tezos edition of three. One going to Santiago. And here is Gaspar de la Guerre, a sober reindeer. And this is an open edition, 46 minted, only 0.1 uh, Tezos here. So interesting abstract here from Gaspar de la Guerre. And I wonder how this was made. It almost looks manual. Maybe it's uh, hard to say. I mean, is it the Adobe Illustrator? Is it Vector? Hard to say, uh, but interestingly painted, kind of original in its rendition here. So I believe we could call that an abstract. Yes, it is. Abstract Gaspar. So that is available on object. And here is Luciana Guerra, Dancing Plague, as you see here. And this is on Zora, 43 minted already. So Zora delivering for artists, like I can't wait to talk to Zach about all this. Uh, it's really interesting. Like the reason artists keep minting on Zora is because Zora is paying. Uh, so they're really doing well uh, in that regard. Uh, their whole, this whole free mint uh, model is uh, really working really nicely. So nice piece here. I always love Plague as a theme. Actually, one of the projects I long worked on that I need to pick up again is Peloponnesian War Plague Edition where, yeah, where I do about 20, uh, where it basically retells the story of the plague in the Peloponnesian War. Anyways, here's Wojak on exchange.art simulation number 25. And I think there's, there is volume on this, interestingly. So interesting work from Wojak here. Again, what looks like an abstract, a little bit of music, half the, kind of could hang with uh, brawn in that half of the pixels are moving, half are dynamic kind of layered, interesting piece there on exchange.art. Simulation number 25 sold for 1.6 sol, which is probably over 200 bucks at this point. $209 four days ago. Nice work, uh, Wojak. And here is Santiago, uh, Santiago on Zora Nature, Natural State of Lizard Qu Quirrell Core. And this was minted two days ago, only two minted so far. So you might be able to get a nice low edition here. I would open this new, but it may crash my computer and camera here. So another cool work. I love the diagonals here. Uh, this kind of pixel art that's diagonal and at different angles here. A simple but uh, powerful innovation there from Santiago. Uh, and this is also another work by Santiago. This is posted on, uh, on Twitter. So again, playing with the lizard, quirrell, squirrel idea. Uh, just really cool. Uh, continuing on, what else do we have? Amelia Versace, happy weekend, friends. So another, I believe this is M-Props that Amelia is using here for these abstracts, which is making all these beautiful, one thing, as we've pointed out here before, one thing that M-Props can do is bring texture. It really does texture well. We've seen it, you know, with Islay, several artists, uh, just really adds a nice kind of painterly sheen uh, to the work. So that was posted on Twitter, but I think it's, you get it on object and maybe related to M props, go to Amelia Versace's object. I think if you want to pick that up, tribal tiles, if you can, 
Uh, so this is also interesting. Two zero 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 two Zuko point one one one. Just an interesting abstract. Totally different here. You see some dithering in there, dithering in there. Uh, this is on Zora. Six minted so far. Uh, just another interesting uh, abstract here. And here is another one. Juana Pedro, First Lander 2023, two minted and 28 days to go here. So all sorts of experimentation and this fuzziness, it almost reminds you of Zuoxo, who I think is right around the corner here. Uh, Macro Mitrai. So another, so new on the scene here, another kind of cool abstract here from Macro Mitrai. Uh, I think I found this in the community. Uh, so cool square brush there. Uh, nice work, two colors, cool title. One Tezos, one gone already, edition of 12. And here is Ruslan Vyeltsev, GM, my friends, Bong of Eternal Stench. And so an interesting work here. Kind of would hang really well with Gozo, wouldn't it? So a little bit of abstraction, a little bit of mostly representation, but kind of an abstract space here with the cube, uh, almost like the, almost the sketchbook style, just kind of an interesting piece. Here is Pamelo Cerrone, uh, who is just doing awesome work as usual. Uh, so here's Pamelo Cerrone, incredibly prolific, super cool artist. Here's another work, Pam. You can just sense the fun uh, that this person, that, that Pamelo is having in the work, and that is powerful. It is very powerful. Look at this, uh, just and just such a developed style here. Uh, Manana Sabato which I think means tomorrow is Saturday. So celebrating that, and maybe it's even a, uh, a, a ad for a, an event of some kind. Here's Walk, continuing the Kush uh, theme here. Blue Kush, uh, of course, uh, referring, one assumes, to a little uh, marijuana plant here. Getting the treatment, here's another one, Blue Cheese. Uh, so pretty fun uh, artworks here with the digital noise treatment, uh, getting the walk treatment here. Edition of one, and this sold for eight Tezos. Nice sale. And here's Blue Hash, uh, four Tezos selling at auction for. And here is the close-up. So more cool work here from, uh, from walk. Here's Zozo. And I don't think we looked at this one. We may have, but I don't think so. We'll see if there's any volume on it. There is. I don't think we looked at this one. Look, just. Amazing. Simply amazing. I mean, the again, pushing the aesthetic boundaries here in this wild video. Interesting title to Why by Zoso. Uh, just brilliant here. Edition of 23 Tezos. Here's an edition of one. For those one of one collectors, I definitely thought about it. Aluminum wave, no volume on this one. A rare one of one from Zlozo, uh, pretty rad, uh, if you ask me. So very just interesting. Aluminum wave. So that is by Zlozo there. As we get everything sorted out here, uh, okay, we got to run through the rest of this episode. Here's Nov 1914 Sendero, another beautiful work here. I think this is an edition of two. We'll check in a second here. Interesting uh, portrayal of the flower here. Totally original. Uh, interesting kind of, again, referencing the meta of the uh, transform tool. And Sendero 1, edition of 2 for 9 Tezos, 1 picked up by Amelia Versace. And let's continue here. Here's Seba, Sist uh, Seba Sistaro, who I do follow, with a really cool one here. This one with, the again, this interesting portrayal of psychological space here. Uh, with a mirror that's almost the person is inside the mirror. Uh, very cool and cool contrast. Just really interesting kind of metaphysical uh, series there. Here is Jake Studios. God bless our drip. So another surreal illustration. Let's see if it loads up here. Beautiful color here. Nice texture and almost like a viewfinder for slides. And some coins here. Some Mario coins in the form of a cross, a halo, and an eyeball. It, n none of it needs to make sense and almost like this Chimabue, like a Virgin Mary and Child Chimabue work, interestingly, with this kind of Lego-esque world and clouds upside down kind of and half-drawn pixelated clouds. Clouds. Uh, this is a Tezos 10 edition of 100, a uh, beautiful work there. And here's uh, Relax, GM, it's the weekend. Uh, just a cool work here by Relax. 
kind of animated here, kind of got a crypto art feel to it. Nice contrast of the paint splattering, which almost looks physical, but maybe that's digital. And contrasting with the movement here in the eyes and the mouth, and nice kind of two-color work there. That always looks great. And Bull dot energy. Again, definitely a crypto art feeling to this one with the keys. And what is Bull dot energy? And so this sold, this is, I think, a one of one. This sold for 20 Tezos on object. So cool work there uh, from uh, Relax. So Bool dot energy. So interesting, maybe Boolean logic. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, who is this? I don't know who this is. XPQZL, kind of a wild work here. Uh, I don't know if there's volume. There is. We don't have a ton of time, so just to give you a quick feel. Kind of a wild video game work here. So that's XPQZL on Zora, 146 minted. So people liking the weird, which is awesome. Look at Fornax Void. This is eight minutes. Wow. Cyberspace Database. Just an epic uh, work by uh, with these beautiful lush pads. Maybe this is a JV2080. So just beautiful. Nice colors here too. Beautiful composition. We're going to speed through a little bit. Because, of course, we don't have eight minutes. We'll see if it loads up. Someone in VR here. So, just very, very, very cool work. This is 23 Tezos, and that's an addition of 10. And two are gone already, and one is transferred. So, get it while you can. And here is Life Cycles by Fornax Void. So an in, another interesting work here, kind of a, I think this is just a kind of abstract GIF here. So just again, just super interesting artist here, interesting abstract edition of one. Going for 18 Tezos for an edition of one of Fornax Void, pretty good deal. Here's Braun, who we were mentioning earlier, pulse number 3000. This is 30 uh, Tezos cents, I think for after getting 3000 followers and kind of nice size when you magnify it, isn't it? Uh, so uh, another really cool abstract there from Braun uh, after 3,000 followers. So congrats to Braun. And here's Jada, who I always want to hang beside in the gallery in my mind here. So another interesting kind of GIF abstract art here, right? Uh, Jada, GM. And here is Ellie Lowe with an interesting piece. Almost sounds like... Uh, Kind of twisted Depeche Mode. Doesn't it? It sounds like a twisted version of Depeche Mode. Hilarious. If I can stop it. There we go. Uh, interesting piece. FM Synthesis, Adobe Photoshop, Blender, Reaper, and DaVinci Resolve. Trash Bag, Season 2, Episode 7, 666, Edition of 1. From Ellie Lowe. And check this out. This is Acid Boy on Gamma. So on Bitcoin. 70,000 sats, so $45. Look at this. Uh, so Acid Boy, it's hard to look at because of the flashing, but wow. Warning flashing lights, so interactive P5JS animation. Here's another one from Acid Boy. Uh, so really interesting work Acid Boy is doing on, uh, I think, ordinals there on Bitcoin. Uh, so here, this is just posted on X. And here, I mean, you go, go lightest, Xcore Lumina. Uh, just another brilliant work of art here from pixel art from Gogo Lightus. I mean, look at this thing. Uh, so again, no shortage of talent out here as we continue to run through this. This is 25 Tezos each edition of 20. And here's L Lucas Lejeune. So adding some music in. So this could be like a party uh, graphic here. Audio by Chris War and visuals by Lucas Lejeune. So a collaboration there. So that is on objects. So really cool work there. Sean Zelmer, bunch, just an interesting abstract here. Could hang well with uh, with uh, Acid Boy. So cool animation there. Uh, let's continue as we run through. I have to run, actually. How are we doing? 
Uh, Fornax Void with another work here. So putting out a ton of work. This is exciting. 6-bit RGB waves. So putting out some interesting abstracts here too. Uh, so this is an edition of one selling for only 20 Tezos uh, for a Fornax Void abstract. How cool is that? Here's Drac.eth GM. Never seen this artist before. So just interesting abstract animation here from X, from again, from Drac.eth. And let's continue. So here are the cool blue of the future, Ranex Deer. Uh, putting out a work here. This is on exchange.art, just found it on uh, Instagram here. Uh, just again, that beautiful, those beautiful blues uh, calling to you from the future. Uh, big shout out to Ranix Deer and to Kiro. MCHX, interesting piece, eh? Uh, the AI abstract artist who has also collaborated with Ranix Deer. Uh, interesting piece uh, there. Here's Spiegel's Meskinen. Kind of a wild work here. Boing, this is on join.xyz. Uh, very cool. Kind of has a Pong feel to it within this kind of room of computer and just even how the the light coming from this ball is kind of nice and kind of you get the dithering and the light, uh, the pixels. Uh, just really interesting piece. High speed 0.06. Interesting Amiga Boing Ball demo inspired by. So by an interesting video. Here's another one, uh, PlayStation Dream Fever, PSX Night Fantasy. This is by 1987 Accident. Hilarious name there. And a skateboard and yeah, all sorts of stuff here. Wild one with kind of like a Tron feel to it. This is an edition of five, not listed yet. And here, continuing the 1980s theme, Chic Not Geek. This is Rakano with an, what looks like an Apple IIe. I think we had this computer and those two five and a quarter inch disk drives. I think we had this exact setup. Shout out to mom. If you're watching this far in the show, congratulations and talk to you soon. Le Chat Noir, another artist I haven't seen before. And I think we're going to have to really run here. I am running out of time. Uh, Le Chat Noir, so interesting abstract here. Kind of abstract, looks like C. Just an interesting piece. Here's Strano, Heights of Desolation. So this looks like a still here. So interesting work. Uh, kind of looks futuristic, almost like Metropolis there. And very quickly, yeah, so interesting piece. And then there was the collaboration with Gozo. So this sold out at or it was transferred and now for sale for 540 Tezos on secondary. Cool work. Look at Kota Nakazono with his gorgeous work here. Green number 14. Not sure if this is a new one or not, but it's awesome. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful here from Kota Nakazono on Instagram. And here's Klaus with a couple of more. We're at composition 153 in this one. So cool work here. That's 21 Tezos edition of one. And here's number 152. And that is also, I believe, available for 21 Tezos on uh, object. Here is SXZR04 was just a really nice kind of glitchy uh, still here. Uh, just cool textures in this one. Kind of looks like flowers. Here's Tugcan with a little bit of kind of analog video glitch here. Kind of nice and fuzzy. Not sure if that's X or how it's supposed to be, but it looks cool either way really richly colored and textured. Here's Inavare GM with some great noise on this piece here. And let's continue. Uh, Bosque Grazias. So again, we're not gonna have a ton of time here and these videos are pretty long and we have a, actually a few videos here. As my computer, <laughs> we're fighting everything here, as you can see, uh, we're almost done. Uh, we're gonna have to, we're fighting the internet, we're fighting the computer processor. Uh, We'll see if we can even do this. We may have to hold off. Here we go. Okay, we're back. We are back. Thought we were gonna get an impromptu ending to the show. So, Skull Projector by Burr Sector. So just a result of the workshop there. And there's a Skull Projector. So just interesting business going on there. And Echo, see if we can get this working. ROM Corruption and Game Photography of Echo the Dolphin, popular uh, video game that is used. Now here we'll see if this works. Interesting jellyfish. 
Echo again goes for a minute 23, and apologies to the artists, I do have to go here. Simulacro, here's another one. So pretty interesting. I think they're out of Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. So check that out. That is on Object New Cloud, and that is sold out, actually, at 6 Tezos. And here's one by Helio Santos, who does the paint uh, pixel, or the paint plotter. So doing some video here. This is 30 minutes, epically. So not sure. So as you see, it slightly changes over time. Pretty wild stuff. Very art gallery feeling, isn't it? Uh, let's continue. Uh, what do we have? This is hilarious. Bosque Gracias Gallery. And here you see what looks like the Bosque Gracias, uh, you know, compound here, where the residency is. Hilariously. So that is cool. That is an addition of 100. And that hasn't been listed yet. And this is also interesting uh, combination of mediums here, a GLB with cyanotype. This is also out of that workshop, a Bosque Gracias residency. This is Nico Alerci. Alerci. Edition of one for 15 Tezos. As we go into the AI, here's Murakita. Pixel Rave is the series. Interesting, interesting work here. So AI and pixel art. I think what you do is you start with AI and then you kind of render it with pixel processing and then it kind of smooths everything out. I suspect. Here's Ocote, Intricate Communication. Uh, this is on manifold.xyz kind of techno shamans in a conversation here with laptops, hilariously. Uh, pretty interesting work there, 0 0.012 ETH. And here's another awesome one by Okot. Uh, people on their phones watching the fall of the West. So I think, so this is on Zora. Beautiful painting, AI painting here. A gorgeous composition. This is Ilya Bliznets. And this is on exchange.art, and this is using AI collage and painting, I believe. Uh, so interesting piece here. And 3.7 sol is the price, and so $481, AI digital painting and collage, indeed. So that's on exchange.art. Here's Skamra with another super cool work here. This just posted on X, beautiful texture. Love this right here, this irrational work right here or sorry, a uh, strip right there on the left. And nice work here also by Skamra. Uh, just nice textures coming in here. So uh, really interesting. Love the bottom rectangle there on the right too. And here is Little Cakes uh, with NFT Uruguay, Uruguay, 2600 AD. And maybe that's Santiago there with a, with a mustache. And so interesting piece by Little Cakes by these almost luminescent beans here. And here's Mo, S-H-I-T, with another cool AI artwork, four and a half thousand views, pretty good, with the nun here, I think, or the lace maker of sorts, but with a, but in a kind of self-conscious, a uh, bit of a meta work here, because of course this is almost looking like a tapestry, uh, and making what looks like a laptop or a computer screen. Here's Bosque Gracias, a cyanotype. So this looks like a physical, doesn't it? And you see the power of physical mark making. Uh, so details, cool title, edition of 10 for 5 Tezos. And here, as we get into the physical works, this is great. Brian McHenry from a hotel room in Colorado. Uh, this is beautiful, isn't it? So very nice piece here of a hotel room in Colorado. Here's Nacho Eterno, Caballo Blanco con Cabeza. So white horse with a cabeza. I'm not sure what that is. Oil, oil stick and acrylic on canvas. Very nice piece there. Here's another one by Rune Christensen. Uh, this is in London uh, with a tiger there. Just it looks like an awesome show. Jessica Brilli Artist kind of reminded me of Lily Illo. And I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? Acrylic and oil on wood panel. Beautiful painting. Uh, beautifully painted. Uh, Jessica Brilli. Uh, here's Strangford. A new edition of Cow Rizzo Prints will be herded into my shop next week. So how cool is that? That looks like a Rizzo print. Interesting. Uh, very cool, uh, the texture here. Again, because you don't get it perfectly, which kind of makes it great. Here's Nick Dalen, three new paintings, Big Walker, DJ Girl, and Giant Sandwich. So here they are. Look at that. Just awesome. Awesome, awesome. And here, it's not gallery posting, Gibran Mendoza with a Game Boy done in what looks like the airbrush style here. you got to love the screen there. This is on Instagram, and here we have Machine posting a kind of a wild work here. I don't think we've seen this one yet. 
And this is it on the canvas here uh, with sunglasses and the necklace and the soft drink there. Almost a Picasso feeling to the composition, the way that the nose seems to come out here. And then the shiny lips, uh, hilarious work, a wild work here. Uh, launched on Arzora, the drop will be an addition uh, at 0.09 ETH each. Once all editions are sold, an algorithm will randomly choose a collector who will receive a physical piece. Cool uh, uh, selling strategy there. It's not gallery, Nalani, another airbrush artist here, kind of more minimal, slightly more abstract. And here is Bondozo Bandito, reading is important. Always having the sense of humor. Not afraid uh, to try different things and just to do whatever the heck Bondozo Bandito wants. Uh, practical guide to being an artist here. And there's bon Bondazo uh, in the studio. And here's the this is another Motto 583 whose work we've been looking at. Here's some figures coming out of this turtle here. Uh, wild work. And here is Walk out of the studio. A new work here. Just master of the airbrush here and of spray paint. I guess spray paint. You can see it right there. Uh, just total master here. Got the drip like nailed as you can see here with the Popeye. Uh, this gorgeous Popeye. This gorgeous perfect Popeye here. This is a on Zora from Walk. Uh, I believe that's an open edition. Here it is. 80 minted so far. Popular work. Uh, nice work from Walk. And that is your show my friends. Next show is going to be shorter. I promise to myself and come out to the spaces with Zach on Wednesday. That's pinned in the uh, pinned tweet on my profile there. Thank you for joining me again. Until next time, take care. <laughs>